welcome back to The Bitter Truth. I'm your host, David De'Aaron Prestonwood, and I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. Not what you want to hear, what you need to hear. Now, first and foremost, we are setting our sights on the city of Dallas. Why would we do this, you ask? Because the city of Dallas is full of clowns. 23-year-olds, two 23-year-olds who have the entire future before them and are jeopardizing their careers in stupid and frankly silly ways. I'm talking, of course, about the Mavericks, Kristaps Porzingis, getting in a brawl outside of a nightclub in Latvia, his home country, and Ezekiel Elliott, who just four hours before his youth football camp at the Star in Frisco was partying it up in Las Vegas and pushed over a security guard while he's in contract negotiations that could make him the richest running back in NFL history. Are you serious, sick? Are you serious? Grow up, young man, grow up. So with that in mind, I want to take a look at a certain examination here. Which 23-year-old would you rather hitch your wagon to if you were a Dallas fan? That's if I know that there are only bandwagon fans of the Cowboys. Oh, 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 good one, David. Yes. And the Mavericks, ah, I mean, they had one year. What else did they really do? Dirk was okay, I guess. Dirk was all right. So, with him gone now, the Mavericks have put their hope their franchise's future in the hands of Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis. Now, we know about Porzingis' other ongoing legal issues. That's gone largely cold uh, in the recent weeks. But look, we're going to talk about this incident here. So, both Ezekiel Elliott and Kristaps Porzingis are 23, year old, 23 years old each. Both of them are due for big paydays. Now, it's true that Zeke has two more years left on his contract, but chances are, because the Cowboys don't necessarily know what's best for them, they are going to give Zeke a monster payday. We're talking north of Todd Gurley numbers. By the way, how is that Todd Gurley contract working out for you, Edley? How is it working out for you? Not very well. He had one season, you gave him the extension two years early, same as Zeke trying to get his extension now, and now you have Todd Gurley suffering, what is it, arthritis in his knee? And as a result of that, the Rams had to burn a second rounder on his potential replacement? Ooh, one year into that deal and you're already regretting it. So what's the natural thing for the Cowboys to do? To follow suit and jump into the deep end as well. Fools! There's no reason to. You have Zeke for two more years and you can franchise him after that. He has no say in the next three years of his career with the usage rates that they have had him in his first three seasons in the league. Two and a half, really, because he missed six games in 2017. So in his first two and a half seasons, that usage rate extrapolated out those next three years. You could burn him to a husk and not have to pay him anything. You invested a fourth rounder in Tony Pollard. That was a nice pickup. Now he's not the starter, he's not the Memphis running back who averaged nine yards a carry. That is Todd Gurley's replacement in LA. But he has a very nice back, seven kickoff returns for touchdowns in college, and he's got a little bit of that Lance Dunbar can-do wall receiving, and he's actually better at running between the tackles than Lance Dunbar as well. So very nice pickup for the Cowboys in the fourth rounder, but you could always use Zeke, run him into the ground, and then invest in a cheaper prospect. You've invested $100 million in that offensive line. You have three guys on that offensive line paid in the top three in their position in the NFL. Why, oh why, would you give them a contract? Because you're Jerry Jones, and you want to punch your money even when it hurts your team. But that's no concern of mine. Let them do what they're gonna do. So with Ezekiel Elliott and his off the field issues, you have a player who I would attest 
is more easily replaced, more so his position is more easily replaced than Kristaps Porzingis. Because basketball and football, we're talking different scenarios here. And in the NFL, a running back, for the most part, is more easily replaced with talent in the top four rounds of the draft than any other position. And when you've already invested $100 million, and when you've already paid $30 million, which they're about to do to their quarterback, Dak Prescott, per year, you've burned up the lion's share of your money. You still got Jalen Smith you gotta lock up. Won't be too long before you gotta figure out LVE as well. You have guys to figure out. Byron Jones is still floating out there. You gotta consider that, Dallas. Now, does it make more sense with Zeke and his uh, six game suspension for domestic violence? Prove it or not, prove it or not, he served it. It was a massive strike one. He is now depending on the violation, one or two strikes away from lifetime ban. You had the incident where he pulled down a woman's top at a St. Patrick's Day parade. Whether or not she was his friend, whether or not that he thought that that was okay, or that she decided after the fact that she didn't care, it's terrible optics. You don't do that, Zeke. You just don't do that. Now, no punishment came from that event. You had the incident then, where also while he was going on with his investigation, the NFL's investigation into Zeke for a year and a half, you had the incident with him supposedly, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, punching out a DJ in Dallas. How is that going to help you? Again, swept under the rug. Now, finally, we have Zeke this past Sunday in Las Vegas at three in the morning. Three in the morning, Elliot is seen arguing with his, I don't know if she's his girlfriend or just a girl there with him, but basically he's bodying her up and he's preventing her from leaving. For a player with the suspension on his record that he has, this is bad optics. Now, with that in mind, he has to be smarter than that. Already, on that purpose alone, you have to be smarter than that, Zeke. A security guard says something to Zeke. Zeke then bodies up the security guard, backs the security guard into a metal gate. The security guard then falls on his ass with a light forearm push from Zeke. So the security guard stumbles and Zeke gives a little bit of a eh, 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 eh. It's really just one of those, but still, the man goes down and then you have Zeke placed in handcuffs because the police on hand saw it and they wanted to make sure. No charges were pressed, but again, if you're Ezekiel Elliott, you were at the time, four hours away, Dallas time, keep in mind, from your football camp for the youth in Dallas. And you're doing this, you're acting a fool. Zeke Elliott, I don't care that you haven't heard more stories in the last year or so. I don't care that his image is trying to be nurtured and massaged into this perfect pillar of the community because we know he still goes out and he still parties hard. Likewise, Kristaps Porzingis appears to party hard. We'll get to that in just a moment. So Zeke, do you invest in that? Now, if I'm Dallas, I immediately, immediately cut off all negotiations for an extension this offseason. Why? Because you showed you haven't learned your lesson. You're two years early to the party. I would argue three years early to the party. And there's no reason to pay 16 million or more dollars per year when you can get 80 to 85% of his value drafting well in the first two or three, possibly even four rounds of the next NFL draft. I just, do, I just don't do it. And then when he acts a fool like this, I damn sure don't do it. But this is about what you, the Dallas fan, would do. So then we take a look at Kristaps Porzingis. We know about his legal issues in New York before he was even a Maverick, where he was accused of sexual assault or rape or whatever the term was. There are all kinds of shaky details in there. We know that Porzingis, the night that he tore his ACL, had intercourse. I'm not gonna, this is a family friendly show. It is a family friendly show. So I'm not going to go too far into that had relations with this woman, relations, and when she wanted to pursue a romantic relationship 
after the fact for several weeks, Porzingis said no. No interest. Pass. She then changed her story, said that he abused her, raped her. It's very sketchy details. Very, very sketchy details. And supposedly he agreed to pay her off and that never came about, so then she brought the story public. Well, it's been over a year since the incident and we've had no new developments outside of when this first came to light. Therefore, probably nothing going on. It might just be a extortion attempt. I don't know. I, I don't want to paint that necessarily, but something stinks and more often than not, you tend to think if something stinks this long and there's no development that's really damning, it's probably a sign. So you still have that clinging to Porzingis. Then you have the incident at the nightclub in Latvia in which three Russian men ambush Porzingis. We don't know what was said, we don't know what happened, but Porzingis was jumped. He was hit reportedly over the head with a bar stool, bloodied head, and his shirt was torn and he chased out the three men from the club. He apparently suffered cuts and bruises to his right hand, his shooting hand, and said he effed up his hand, told the Mavericks he effed up his shooting hand, but no structural damage. Well, Porzingis comes through the DFW terminal, Terminal D, I believe, the other day, and he's got his hand casted up, raised serious concerns for Mavs fans, Understandable, you just expended a lot of assets getting a potential superstar player, a guy who was already well on his way to being a superstar, and then you see that optic, and you see his off-the-court issues before he even suits up for the Mavericks for the first time in a game. Understandable, understandable. It's been a year and a half since he's played, and everything that's come out about him in that meantime seems to be negative towards his character and what he does off the court. That is concerning. However, the Mavericks are going to look to pay him approximately $150 million this offseason. So, who would you rather pay? Would you rather pay Elliot or Porzingis? They both have their baggage. They're both 23 years old, and they're both cornerstones to their franchise. Now, some people might tell you, Elliot because Elliott is the all-pro talent. He's already led the NFL in rushing two of his first three years. If not for his suspension in 17, he probably goes a cool three for three in that department. But all the same, Elliott makes a lot of sense in that regard, except for the fact that as I've already explained, the running back position is the easier position to replace. A superstar in the NFL can wreck a game, and Elliott is exceptional at that. But a superstar in the NBA is more. In the NBA, stars can carry their teams to playoff success, to championship success. They have more ability to impact a single game than an individual in the NFL other than maybe a quarterback. That's just the fact of the matter. So when you look at that and you consider Elliot more replaceable, and look at, look, at, look at this too. In the NFL, free agency is very different from the NBA. In the NFL, a free agent, a guy like Zeke is not going to bring in a primo superstar free agent. You just don't have that movement in the NFL like you have in the NBA. Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, that pairing is going to bring star talent to Dallas, whether that be Kemba Walker, whether that be Chris Middleton, whether that be Nikola Vucevic, it's going to bring talent to that roster. So, Porzingis, in my estimate, with his free agency impact, his 22, 23 points per game, seven or eight boards, two blocks a game, impact on the floor, his unicorn status is more irreplaceable than Ezekiel Elliott because you can get most of what you get out of Zeke and another player for a quarter or less of the price and you have a free agency marketing phenom that cannot be matched in the NFL. That is the simple cold hard truth. Kristaps Porzingis, Ezekiel Elliott, get, get your heads out of your butt. Get your heads out of your butt. There's no reason for this. There is no reason for this. 
No reason for this! Now, if you want to prolong your careers, you will grow up. Because that is what they need. Then again, I'm not a fan of Dallas. The city of Dallas, whether it be the Cowboys. The Cowboys over here. Haven't won anything in 24 years, yet they're running their mouth every year. This is the year! This is the year, they tell me! It hasn't been a year in two and a half decades. Or, they have Kristaps Porzingis over here with the Mavericks. We know how Mark Cuban wasted Dirk Nowitzki's future post-championship. We know how he did that. He lucked into Luka Doncic. Now let's see if he can avoid screwing that up too. I'm David Deere on Prescott, and this has been the Better 